Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of The Court Council, where we discuss world events and YouTube events outside of the other topics that occur here on my channel. Yes, I am back. I know a lot of you missed me. Those of you who are new, welcome. If this is your first time in attendance, consider hitting the subscribe button before you leave our kingdom. Yes, I'm, I'm aware that I have been absent. I have been recovering. I have been extremely unwell for about the past month. So that's why you guys kind of saw me trickling down in my frequency of posting and then it just kind of came to a standstill. I was going through it, you guys, and I, YouTube is my happy place, my kingdom and my court, that's my happy place. You guys know this at this point. So I only get on camera when I can give you guys like my best, when I actually am happy. Um, when I am truly unwell or bothered, I typically don't get on camera unless it's, there's maybe one or two times you guys have seen me truly be emotional or something happening to me on camera. But for the most part, if I can't give you guys like my best, I'm not gonna be on camera. And for about the past month, I've been going through it. So it, it's just, it's been hard. And thank you to all of my IRL friends that have had my back, um, just being here with me, helping me through this illness. No, it's not COVID. Gosh, honestly, COVID would have been easier, but it, it wasn't COVID. Either way, I'm better and I'm back. And we're getting back to the regular scheduled programming. Finally, it has definitely set me back about a month. Uh, I'm trying to catch up on schoolwork. And because I am in school, uh, political science major, hello, international relations, uh, schoolwork, and then all the YouTube plans that I have. There's a lot of YouTube plans I've been talking about for a minute, and it's supposed to start kicking off, you know, around Christmas time. So I need to, I need to get back on the ball. But I miss you guys, like truly, I do. Like I miss you so much. You guys are like my bestest friends ever, and I have missed being in front of a camera and talking. And I'm like, we haven't done a court council in a minute, and through my bit of unwellness, illness. You guys saw me every now and then posting on social media so that you guys knew that I wasn't like dead or, you know, missing. <laughs> I still was active on social media. I had posted on Twitter, which automatically posts to our Discord, which is linked in the description box below, something about Aquafina. Aquafina has been catching a lot of heat on social media lately. And even I popped off at her on Twitter because of this tweet. Okay, so the way that I saw this little message was in tweet form, but apparently she was doing an interview with Vice for her participation in the newest Marvel movie, superhero movie, which I do not plan on watching. Um, I just don't. In this interview, Aquafina said, I'm not okay with someone writing the Asian experience for an Asian character. I make it very clear I don't ever go out for auditions where I feel like I'm making a minstrel out of our people. She said that in an interview, Miss Aquafina. Now, a little bit of a history before we really get into this, okay? Before we really get into this. A little bit of a history on Aquafina. She was born in Long Island, raised in Queens. Um, she has a Chinese father, Korean mother. So she's Asian, but of different cultures. And she grew up in New York. So that's her, her backstory. And it, it does come into play because Aquafina, number one, for whatever reason, has some sort of rap career, which I mean, okay. My veg make your girl panties cream. Yo veg spreads hepatitis C. And my veg, a chrome Range Rover. Yo veg hatchback 81 Toyota. But she's truly known for her caricature and or black scent that she uses in movies, on camera, um, to be funny. She uses it as, you know, a comedian type comedy thing, which if you've seen some of my other court counsels, we have discussed the issues with only using a black scent or black language to be funny, because then you're basically making a joke out of the way people speak naturally, right? We've discussed this before. Go back into my, you know, playlist of court counsels if you've missed a few sessions, because we've done that class, we've learned that lesson. Aquafina clearly hasn't been in attendance, but Twitter went up into an uproar an absolute uproar. And I know that I'm talking about this a little bit, like a couple weeks after this happened, because honestly, it's still going on. Like every time I hop on Twitter, people are still at her throat because number one, her choice, her choice of language in this interview, she said, I don't want to make a minstrel out of our people, meaning which she's, she's correct in this. She does not want to portray a caricature or stereotype of an Asian character. I understand that Hollywood has, a very rough record when it comes to portraying any minorities, all right? If you guys have seen The Last Airbender, that was BS. If you saw Cloud Atlas where they had white Americans wearing prosthetic like monolids to portray themselves as Asian, 
like it's not just the black community that gets this nonsense treatment from Hollywood. The Asian community gets it too. And you guys every, have every right to be upset with the way Hollywood has portrayed you throughout the years because they've made an absolute mockery at points of the Asian community. So when she's saying, I don't wanna make a caricature out of our people, 100% understand that. But what I don't get is the hypocrisy. And you guys know that that is one of my pet peeves, okay? You know, those of you who have watched my Charlie Gold Hater Nations that you know one of my biggest pet peeves is some hypocrisy. The audacity of this woman to sit up here and say, I don't wanna make a mockery of my people while making a mockery of the African-American culture, heritage, and language. Make it make sense, sis. For those of you who have seen Crazy Witch Asians, which I have, you guys know, I, look, I'm a sucker for a love story, like Princess all day. I love a love story, okay? Of course I watched it. And of course that man is a dreamboat. Like if you thought I wouldn't date an Asian man, you got another thing coming, okay? I, please, please. Have you seen him? All right then, don't ask questions. Crazy Rich Asian, she was in this movie, which was dominated by a full on Asian cast. Fantastic, and I 100% love that movie. Like absolutely, did you see that wedding scene? Did you see the wedding scene though? Like cut to, to die for, to die for. Even the leggings under the dress, girl was serving fashion out on her wedding day. But in this cast, which was completely Asian, it was, you know, filmed in like abroad in an Asian culture and country she was still using her black scent, portraying a black scent. Like use it, she uses it for comedic effect. You're not a chicken. You gonna roll up to that way and you gonna be like, fuck, fuck, bitch. And Crazy Rich Asians was not the only movie in which she used it. She also used it in, what is that, that uh, Ocean's 8? When there was like an all female cast of Ocean's 11. Look, I love all the robbery movies. They're great. All of the Oceans, I'm on that. She was in that and she was still doing the whole accent Brooklyn-esque New Yorker thing. And some of the people in the comments section, you can stop it right now. Cause I, I hear your fingers typing. I can hear it through the universe, through my court, in my king. I hear your fingers typing, hold up now. Cause I know a lot of people are gonna be like, it's a New Yorker thing. New Yorkers talk like that. New Yorkers, blah, 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 blah. Let me set you straight. Hi, my name is Devana. And I uh, went to school in Japan, if you didn't know. You know, some of you guys are new, you didn't know that I spent time in an actual Asian country. I went to school in Japan. Now, me having spent a couple of years overseas, do you hear me speaking in a Japanese accent? Have you ever heard me speaking in a Japanese accent? I don't think so. Never have you ever. Just because you were raised in a certain place does not give you the right or the necessity to take on a persona that is not who you are. Even if I spent my entire life in Japan, I would still have been raised in an American household. My parents and my family and the people caring for me and raising me are American. I would have learned how to speak English through them. I would have learned how to speak language through them. Absolutely, there are parts of my life that have a Japanese influence just because of where I was raised or how I was. But I have never, and nor would I ever take on the identity or caricature or stereotypes of what the world perceives to be an Asian woman. You guys have never seen me do that. Aquafina was raised in an Asian household by Asian parents. So regardless of the situation of her upbringing, her language, her culture, her everything that she is had nothing to do with the black experience, black Americans, black people. And I need people to like truly understand that. Yes, you can spend time around black people. Yes, you may have black friends. Yes, you may have grown up in a neighborhood around black people, but that's not gonna change who you are. You understand what I'm saying? Just because I spent time in Japan does not mean that I'm suddenly Japanese. Does not mean I'm suddenly like, I understand parts of the culture, but even I, someone who's lived there, who's actually experienced, can never say that I'm going to know everything of what it means to be Japanese because I was not born and like raised that way. I don't have Japanese parents. There is always going to be a disconnect of things that I don't understand because I was not birthed into that culture. Aquafina uses the excuse that I was born in New York, therefore I can speak with a black scent. Babe, no. 
First of all, everybody in New York is not black. New York is very diverse, uh, many different cultures, and it, it does not necessitate that you take on a black identity. So I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm trailing off here. I'm trailing off because like I'm, like I'm stating here, it's the hypocrisy. It's the hypocrisy of her saying, I don't wanna make a minstrel out of our people. First of all, if you look, I'm gonna read you the, the definition of what minstrel means, because that's the other thing that really pissed off, especially black Americans. There is a literal definition of the word minstrel, and it was, it was so beyond ironic the way she decided to use it. So let me pull up the actual definition. Now, number one, there is a medieval term for the word minstrel. A medieval singer or musician, especially one who sang or recited lyric or heroic poetry to a musical accompaniment for nobility. But here's the second definition. A member of a band of entertainers, typically white actors with blackened faces who performed in a type of stage entertainment prevalent in the US in the 19th and early 20th centuries featuring songs, dances, and formulaic comedic routines based on stereotyped depictions of black Americans. She used the word minstrel to apply to Asian Americans when literally the word a minstrel, minstrelsy is meant to depict black Americans, specifically black slave descendant Americans in a negative light. So not only is she colonizing freaking black culture for the hell of it, for laughs and giggles. She's colonizing the little word that was created to describe the torment that other people put us through historically. Aquafina, get yourself together. And that's why, like, this is why Twitter and the black Americans were so triggered because it, it almost seemed like she was poking us for the fun of it, which I don't think she was, but it's just so beyond ironic for her to be like, I don't wanna make a minstrel, which you can't because that's the, that's the definition of minstrel applies to black people. I don't wanna make a minstrel or be a minstrel of our people, but you have no problem being a minstrel to black Americans. And I said this on Twitter, cause I'm like, do you not understand the reason people think you're funny? The reason people pay attention to you, the reason you're known is because you are the Asian minstrel of black Americans. But you wanna sit up here and say, but I don't want anybody to do what I'm doing to my people. I have no problem doing it to black people, but don't do it to my people. <sighs> Gosh, I've never wanted to fight an actor ever in my life, but Aquafina, like somebody sit her down because I said this on Twitter, I'm like, do you not, this is, everybody who knows Aquafina, you know her because of her black scent. And understand that black scent was not something that she was learned. Like the people that speak that way, they speak that way because they were raised that way, because their parents taught them that way, because that's the environment they grew up in. That is their actual accent. The same way how Latin people or Spanish speaking Americans have an accent, the same way that maybe Korean or Chinese Americans may have an accent from the way that they were raised, or if they're first generation Chinese, they may have an accent. That is not something that was adopted. That is something that comes naturally to these people. A black scent is not something to be walking around using for shits and giggles. It is a part of somebody's life, but Aquafina turns it into a joke. It's something that she uses for effect. And black people on YouTube and TikTok have been trying to explain to the world why this is such a problem because people use bl uh, black scent on TikTok so that they could be TikTok famous so they can seem cool or whatever. And the problem is you're, you're adopting aspects of the black culture and then you want to dispute where it came from, okay? Because people want to use certain words and use certain language, but then not give respect to the community they're stealing it from. Imagine if I sat up here trying to be a Bollywood singer, right? And I'm like, anybody can, anybody can sing any song you want. But imagine I'm singing like Bollywood songs whilst saying um, insults to like the Indian community or disputing the fact that Bollywood comes from India. I'm like, technically Bollywood's not only Indian. Uh, you, you guys got the word Bollywood from Hollywood anyways. Like everything's not, you're like, could you imagine the audacity for me to sit here and be like, use a part of their culture, but not give respect to said culture because that's what the world does to the black community continuously. And Aquafina lately has been getting praise for her nonsense and shenanigans. And it's gotten to the point where not even just black Americans, which I love, those of you, like you non-black people who are calling out the BS, man, you serve my spirit. I love you guys. Like you guys are amazing because it gets us exhausting as a black person to constantly have to explain what we see as common sense. Like it's, it's common sense that you wouldn't make fun of an Asian person for their accent. So why then is it okay for people to make fun of black people for their accent, right? I, every now and then you guys will hear my black scent come out. I do the code switching on YouTube 
so that foreign nationals can understand what I'm saying. I understand that I have a lot of overseas people and it can be very difficult to understand what I'm saying if I'm speaking a mile a minute and I'm using tons of slang and like, like African-American vernacular English. You're, it's gonna be difficult for them to understand me. Every black person knows how to code switch. Usually it's for like job purposes, but I do it here for people to understand me. Black people code switch out of necessity. Aquafina code switches so that she can make money. But at the same time, she acknowledges that making a minstrel out of somebody's culture is wrong. You see, you, do, you, do, you see the, do you see the issue? Because regardless of how you feel on this issue, Aquafina herself has said publicly, she does not approve of people making a minstrel out of the Asian culture. She said she does not approve of being a minstrel. So how then are you okay being a minstrel for another culture? You will protect your culture, but make a mockery of somebody else's. This is why I don't like Aquafina because that is just, that's, that's selfish. That's completely selfish and mean and ignorant and irresponsible. Aquafina has a platform. Aqua, she, she's, she has acting accolades. I don't know why she keeps getting them. Why, why, why? Why is Aquafina on my timeline? Like why, why? Every bit of backlash she's getting, she deserves, and she hasn't said anything about it. As far as I've checked, and I have checked, I haven't seen her say anything about this controversial issue, but she needs to say something because she's already acknowledged that she personally doesn't approve of this type of behavior when it comes to her people. So why then are you doing it to my community? Believe it or not, in my household, when I'm having fun with my mom and my family and certain people, I will speak with a black scent. You guys have heard it in several videos of mine. You'll hear the black scent come out. It's not something that I do on purpose. It just happens naturally. I try to control it when I do certain videos so that you can understand me, but it's something that comes out of me naturally. The slang will come out of me naturally. The, you know, when I say I ain't about to do something like this, that's just how I speak sometimes. In a professional setting, no, because we're black Americans and we know better. We know we have to code switch, otherwise people are gonna make fun of us. But that's the problem with this whole situation, is that if I, if I was speaking like that on my YouTube channel when I started my YouTube channel, I would not have gotten the respect that I have. I, people would not have taken me seriously. If I go to a job interview and speak like that, if I speak with a black scent, if I speak with slang, I'm not gonna get the job, I'm not. But Aquafina has been booking jobs because of her black scent. Something that I, a native black American, can't do. I get punished for my black scent. People assume that I'm ignorant, that I'm stupid, that I'm ghetto if I use a black scent, you know, outside of just like my family setting. If I sat here and constantly used it on YouTube, I guarantee I never would have gotten the support that I have. Like a lot of you that are here, you understand that I'm, you know, of some intelligence. You understand that I have a, you know, a thought process. I'm not seen as ghetto by most people on the channel, I think. But um, had I constantly spoken the way Aquafina likes to do, a lot of people would have thought negatively of me. I would have got the negativity, but she doesn't. You know, are, we, are we not seeing the problem here? The hypocrisy, you know, the, it's just, I just, I just can. So I wanted to talk about it because to this day, I'm like getting back online and I'm seeing Aquafina like back trending again, like trending again, trending again. And people are actually pretty pissed and I approve. I approve. I wholeheartedly approve of the train going through Aquafina's uh, living room right now. Throw all the tomatoes y'all want until she deals with the issue and stops pretending like it's acceptable. Just because you're raised in New York does not mean you're black. I had some people tell me that on the video I did about 6 9 They're like, oh, he's from New York, so that's why he says the N-word. That's why, no, 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 no. Just because you're in New York does not mean you're black. Just because you're in New York does not give you claim on black culture. I don't give a crap if your neighbor was black. Like, what does that mean? What does that mean? Oh, I grew up around black people, so? So? Like, your parents didn't speak like that. Your teachers didn't speak like that. You're not gonna tell me you went to school and your English teacher was teaching you to speak like that. That type of language is born out of family ties, out of mothers and fathers and whoever raised you teaching you that way. Cause schools don't like, I know it's New York. Okay, I get it's New York, but school doesn't teach you to speak like that. You did it so that you could be down. You did it so that you could be cool. You did it so that you could be funny. Not okay. It's not okay. 
It's not okay. In the comment section below, let me know what you think about this topic. Do you know who Aquafina is or am I just now bringing you into this nonsense? I am aware that I have a lot of um, Asian courtiers. What do you think about this situation? And honestly, tell me how you would feel if the roles were reversed. Tell me how you would feel if I spoke with an inaccurate caricature accent of a Japanese person. And I did like, you know, how, how would you feel if I sat up here and did that and used the excuse that, well, I grew up in Japan, so therefore I can do that. I just, I wanna know your perspective on the nonsense and uh, your perspective on Aquafina. Do you even think she's relevant? I'm, I'm kind of happy for, I don't wanna say it's a cancellation because people are like, oh, cancel culture. No, shut up with the whole cancel culture thing. It's called accountability. That means you did something wrong and you need to be held accountable for it. Forget this whole, oh, cancel culture needs to end. No, it doesn't. It's called accountability culture. So stop trying to brush everything under the rug because you don't want to talk about the nonsense that you did. Just just deal with it. How about that? Stop avoiding the issue. Put your, look, let me stop. Go ahead and put your, uh, your words in the comment section. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up. And like I said, if this is your first time here, welcome. I will be back. I'm always back. I love you. I'll miss you. And I will see you in a future video. Bye.